What's happening, Andy here. I'm joined today by the boys from Global Office. I got Anthony and I got Steve. How are you guys? What's happening? Doing, Doing great. great. Good to see you. Well, we had you on here today just as a uh, follow up and a thank you for uh, last week. I was out at your holiday gala. Uh, that's the third straight year you've had it at at this uh, just incredible um, venue overlooking San Francisco. I believe it overlooks the San Francisco Bridge. Uh, for two years, I thought that was the other bridge, but somebody straightened me out this year. Um, I wanted to kind of follow up and talk about it. It was a great event. You've had brother there in the past. You had some some pretty senior people from Canon showed up this year. Uh, Canon people were there in the past as well. So just uh, let's let's recap a little bit, Steve. Why don't you tell us about the event, and then Anthony will kind of get into you know who was there and 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 you know recap it a little bit. So Steve, tell us tell us about what you what what was the event that was at last week. No, I appreciate it. It was our annual holiday gala. We we try to do something a little different every year. Um, and we're not hyper-focused on office technology as a theme. Um, we typically have a, a business uh, theme in mind. This year was about, um, you know, an optimistic uh, return of San Francisco right, to combat the doom loop uh, uh, dialogue that's going on nationwide. Mm -hmm. So well, I'll let Anthony speak to the panel he put together, but it was a it was a well thought out, well conceived panel that we assembled, with this whole purpose of opening a a frank discussion about uh, you know why we feel San Francisco is still you know just a, a tremendous uh, city and why we're so optimistic that uh, you know there'll be some return to uh, to greatness and uh, and and it was that idea in mind that we put together uh, this event. So maybe Anthony can speak uh, specifically to the to the panel itself. Yeah, the panel was the panel is unreal. Um, you know, San Francisco is like a lot of big cities, right? A lot of challenges coming out of COVID. Um, but I, I got to tell you, as an outsider coming back, it's it's still you come in, you land there and it is a special place. You come over the water and you just see the skyline and you come downtown and, and it's um, maybe a little less traffic than back in the heyday. But uh, I actually didn't mind that. It was easy to get around. And and so um, you've done a panel every year for this. And and to Steve's point, you you tend to not it's, we're not doing this event at your office, which I visited a very nice office in downtown. Um you know, you guys don't just sit there and have everyone looking at copiers the whole time. There's always a point to the panel. Um, and and I, I always thought that it was kind of nice, but this one was 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 over the top. So give us a little background on, on some who some of these panelists were and, and you know, some of the thought behind um, this year's theme. Yeah, so I mean, Steve and I, you know, every year we try to provide value for the people in attendance, whether it's our, our clients or if it's prospects or people new to global office. You know, and value not just being, you know, what's our MPS prop and how can we save you money? It's it's how can we create a relevant conversation about, you know, business interests, aligning those for, you know, the conversation that we do every year. And, uh, you know, really coming out of COVID. So we've always had a holiday party for our, our clients. But again, providing value was we wanted to have that conversation. So you were there the past two years as we had a panel and we talked about hybrid and coming out of COVID. You know, and this year it was you know, it, with AI being the centerpiece of San Francisco, it, it it just made sense to do San Francisco and everything about it. And um, so we wanted to celebrate that. We wanted to show the highlights of it. And um, once we started to have a conversation in the business community, you know, things just started to unfold. You know, they unfold later than what you want, but probably sometime early November, we, you know, locked in our panel. So uh, we had a great conversation to start off with with uh, Ted Egan, he's the uh, chief economist for the city and county of San Francisco. Um, we had Sarah Dennis Phillips from the Office of uh, Economic Development that was appointed by the mayor. We had um, the Bay Area Council there. Um, we had the uh, M&A and transportation specialist from Uber. I actually flew in from Amsterdam just to be on the panel for, um, uh, for this December, so that was fantastic. And, uh, you know, we had the San Francisco Chronicle doing the moderating for the event. Um, it, I mean, we just had a, an all-star panel. It was just fantastic. So and, that panel, uh, I, I want to interrupt a little, because that panel was all-star. I mean, the, the the places that you just mentioned were over the top to begin with, but the backgrounds, and you can hear them. Um, I'm going to include it. I, I did just write an article on you know, your, your event. And I did capture the intro, and you, you almost didn't talk about it, but your intro to that panel was the greatest panel intro 
bar none, I think, in the history of panels. You guys had the hype man. Um, uh, what's his name? Franco Finn? Franco uh, Finn. From, from the Golden State Warriors. And if you shut your eyes, you would have thought you were watching a, about to watch a basketball game. The, the, the <laughs> amount of energy that he brought to that introduction of all these people. And by the way, all these people were from like Stanford and Cal and like the backgrounds, Harvard. And like, these were just incredible offices that these people were in. These were brilliant people from those incredible offices. These were the, I got the feeling that these were the, you know, part of the influencers and the people who make San Francisco, what San Francisco is that are driving decisions that are, you know, direction, strategy, planning out um, where San Francisco is going. So you had some real thought leaders up there. Um, <laughs> the intro was just so over the top. That was the best, but, but go on, uh, you know, just let's talk, talk, talk a little about what they discussed and the AI and San Francisco coming back. Cause that was, that was fascinating. Uh, let me just, uh, Anthony, you forgot Wade Rose from uh, Advanced SF, which we played. I don't know if you saw the intro video that we played. Yes, uh, yes. Message yet to come. So that was developed by Advanced SF, who uh, is led by President uh, Wade Rose, who was also on the panel as well, with the, the vision of of, of uh, San Francisco coming back. Yeah, it was it was awesome. And so then, what, fill us in a little bit. What what um what were some of the things they talked about? I mean, what I thought was I, what I thought was fascinating was in in our conversation, we we referenced print and print data and some of the increases that we saw in all of our conversations. So that really kind of sparked um, the, the conversation we had with the individuals. But I think one of you know a, a few of the takeaways, but one of them was we talked about the boundaries for San Francisco and employment. So work from home and what that looks like, and the infrastructure that San Francisco has to house so many more people, but not taking on any more real estate. So these companies can really expand their footprint, grow their companies. You know, people are coming from Roseville. They're coming from, some are coming from, from Truckee, you know, and they're coming in one to two days a week. So you see more commuting traffic coming across the bridges, but not really putting a stress on the infrastructure because, um, you know, because of where they're coming from and what, what we currently have for vacancy. Levels. You got bandwidth. Yeah. And so, so we had a couple other good takeaways from it. One of yeah, the, the yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Steve. Oh yeah, I was just going to say that the, the the epiphany that I think um, uh, the chief economist Ted Egan had was that um, you know we can't we can't compare all the data to pre and post COVID. Uh, he's saying you know for instance we look at the data of uh, bridge commute you know uh, Bay Bridge and Golden Gate Bridge at pre pandemic levels, but it doesn't represent the same cast of characters commuting five days a week to a specific office. So it, it, it represents more individuals uh, commuting less days. And his epiphany was that the city's been able to now hire uh, really highly qualified IT staff and, and others uh, in support positions from as far away as Roseville, uh, based on the fact they don't have to come to the office five days a week, based on the fact maybe they show up once a week uh, for collaborative meetings. So he, he feels that um, San Francisco has broadened its geographical boundaries as well as its ability to host and support uh, growing businesses that won't necessarily need to scale their infrastructure needs to to double or triple in size. And and I thought it was kind of a brilliant insight into w what's likely to be uh, the outcome of San Francisco. You know, it may end up being uh, more people working in and around San Francisco than than did pre pandemic but with the ability to accommodate those people as well. Yeah. And then the second thing he brought up was that he felt that San Francisco needs to be, um, you know, almost a tourist spot for workers. You know, he, he, he felt that, you know, San Francisco needs to provide amenities and opportunity, you know, and experiences that, that make a, a worker want to come in into the city. And so there's a lot of uh, discussion going on now about some of the projects they can do downtown and around, that you know make a worker uh, want to be a, a working tourist, so to speak. It was so that, a really creative conversation. I mean, it was just the discussion, the recognition, you know, that there are problems and that um, you know things are different than they were back before. Before you know, obviously the pandemic, and and big cities like San Francisco are struggling. And um, one of the interesting things I thought, though, from the, probably one of the more interesting things from the the entire evening was. Uh, when Anthony and I were chatting and that whole you 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 kind of you made the analogy that we, that our industry is the canary in the in the coal mine. I don't know if you remember that. And that was I thought that was great because you, in what you were saying, 
you were talking about how, you know, print is the first place, one of the first places you start seeing when people start coming back. And this was, you indicated this was the first year since the pandemic that you're actually starting to see, if not a slowdown, actually an increase in some of the print. And to you, that's an indication that people are coming back. So there's some encouragement. There's definitely enthusiasm. I could see it in the room and especially with that panel. Um, are you, tell me about that. What, you know, what are you starting to see from your customers as far as bringing people back? Is it, is it, you know, mandated? Is it, are they volunteering on it? How are, how are they handling this? Um, what, what are you seeing there? Well, I, I think, um, you know, I'm part of it for the panel was, um, and we tried to scrub some of our numbers to see, um, you know, where the print data was coming from being in San Francisco proper to some of the outskirts of San Francisco. We try to look at different verticals. And I, I think just overall, you know, we've seen, uh, you know, this past year, you know, a pretty significant increase in the numbers. And so, you know, we felt we were the closest aligned to really looking at numbers for people coming back to the office. And, um, and then when we brought up that statistic with, you know, the chief economist, with Sarah Dennis Phillips, with Wade Rose from Advanced SF, they were all very intrigued by that number and wanted to add that to their data. Um, you know, they look at, I think it's, uh, uh, castle reporting from all the badges, uh, from all the badge in for these buildings. Um, you know, they look at, at traffic across the bridges. They look at um, ride shares and the amount of um, uh, uh, commuting back to the airports, uh, uh, the uh, hotel industry. So, but none of that really, I think, expresses where these people are going. Are they tourists? Are they workers? And, um, you know, what's better aligned than print? I mean, it's in the office. Yeah, I mean, that's just so, it's ingenious if you think about it, but, you know, our little industry, you know, all of a sudden is is, is actually kind of a leading indicator as to what's happening in, in the office, right? I mean, you really can tell if the volumes are following certain trends over the years, and then they start going the other way, and nobody expects them to go the other way, right? Until, unless you're in a situation where everybody was working from home, and now they're starting to come back. And so, you know, a spike is good. I'm sure you're very happy to see it. Uh, let's, before I let you guys go, what, um, What's on the what's on the horizon for 2024? What are you guys excited about? Anthony, why don't you start and then Steve will we'll finish with you. Um, well, it's hard. I don't want to take away too much of Steve's thunder, but um, you know, I think what we're really excited about, um, Andy, is is our growth. Yeah. What we've seen over the past four years through COVID, through supply chain issues, um, from any outside factors, you know, whatever that may be. You know, we've done a really good job of of growing, um, you know, during that time. And we have some very, very big plans for next year um, uh, with our workforce and our staff, with sales, with with our technical force, um, our staffing. So we're, we're excited about that. And um, and I think we'll have good things next year. Excellent. How about you, Steve? Yeah, to, to build on that a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh Growth, 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 Andy. We're excited. We, uh, you know, we're believers. Um, we, uh, you know, we embrace print. You know, we're not trying to reinvent ourselves. Um, and, uh, you know, we're an independent dealer. And so I think that gives us a lot of opportunities. So we're going to be on a heavy recruitment drive next year, uh, looking to hire uh, key key people, right? Um, and to grow our, our footprint and grow our staff. And, uh, you know, uh, Canon Canon is uh, is encouraging growth. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Canon is one of the few manufacturers where they don't really have territories uh, with their dealer agreements. Yep, yep. Um, so if you can service it, you can sell it. So they allow you to expand or contract as you see fit as a business, with, without regard to uh, zip codes and uh, or or states for that matter. So we're looking for a big growth here next year and looking to add key people, and we're excited about it. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for including me. This is one of my favorite times of the year is coming out there. And it's just a great way to finish the year for me. So um, I would say your best one yet. It was it was awesome that that uh, <laughs> that that hype man just made it. I keep laughing. I've just you know, I've never been introduced like that before. So I'm a little jealous of the of the esteem people you had up there, although I'd, I probably didn't get quite the education that those guys had either. That's probably why I'm in the copyright industry. But uh you know, here we are, and this was great. This was an awesome way to end the year. And thank you guys for being on the show today. And we will chat. We'll catch up soon. Have a great holiday and great new year. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, guys.